everybody, it's Kim Wilson and it's time for our card class for this month for July and I'm so excited to show you this tower, pinwheel tower card. I just love this card. It, it's just so cool. It has four different surfaces as you go around that you can decorate and I've got some great tips for you um, for this um, card and I'll show you how to put it together. The PDFs are in the... Um, in the group and they're posted. I do have one mistake right there, which we will change a two, to a three to a two, but I'll correct that later this afternoon um, on the post. And so in your kit, if you've got a kit, and I do have extra kits if you didn't get a kit, um, they're $15 for the class kit. And um, it includes the piece that you need for the tower. And I've already scored it. You're gonna, um, if you're, do if you're starting from scratch, you're going to cut a piece four and a half by four and a quarter and then score it at one inch, two inch, three inches, and four inches. And that leaves you um, one inch sides for your tower and then a half inch strip that you'll use to put it together. So what I did was grab some tear and tape here and put it on my strip. You can use your tape runner too, but um, I like the tear and tape because it's a little more sturdy sometimes. Um, the reason I'm using designer series paper for the tower instead of cardstock is because it gives you a lot less bulk when you're folding it. And I got that tip from a friend and because most people use uh, cardstock for their towers and then it's kind of bulky there with all those layers. But if you use designer series paper, it's still sturdy enough to hold everything together, but it folds so much easier for mailing. So that's a great tip. So instead of trying to piece it together like that, this, the easiest way to uh, do it is just fold it in half and then it will go right down perfectly um, onto that flap and give you your tower piece all ready to decorate. And just a note, the um, outside of your tower is going to be completely covered. So you decide what you want for the inside of your tower. I chose to use the the patterned, um, patterned piece, but if you want your fl floral piece on the inside, you can do that as well. This is the hand penned paper, which I just love, and I've been using it like crazy. Okay, now we're going to put our um, our cardstock pieces on. So you've got to make a decision right now how you want your card laid out, because there's two different options to make your pinwheel. You can make the pieces, so the big pieces on the left like mine, and the small pieces on the right, or you could turn it upside down and do it exactly opposite and have um, the small piece on the left and the larger pieces on the right. So either way, it's exactly the same. It just depends on which way you want to flip your paper and kind of um, plan ahead your sentiments you're going to use, and that might decide. Um, I like this. I kind of planned this for my last panel, so this is going to be where I sign. And so I have a small stamp here, so I thought I'd use the small one um, on this side. But if you had a larger stamp you wanted to use and more space to write, then you might want to do it the opposite way. But it doesn't really matter. Just plan it out ahead because sometimes some of the papers are directional, so you might want to... Um, make your decision um, that way. All right, so next is to put the four um, pieces of cardstock on. And again, probably tear and tape is the, is the most sturdy way to do that. So I'm going to just put some on my, on my tower here on the edge. And you're only going to need adhesive on the part that fits on the tower because the other parts are going to be free Free to move about. So there's my first one. All right, and then so my next one, I'll just keep going around in a circle and put them all on. And it doesn't have to be way to the edge either. So you could even put two, two strips down if you wanted to. It'd be a little more sturdy, but I'm just going to 
do one to make it quick like that. So we're just going around, around the tower on each of the four sides and putting our flaps down. One, two, three. This is the third one. And the hard part with tear and tape is just getting it started, but if you kind of burnish the edge a little bit, it's easier to pick up. All right, one more to go. Anyhow, I've been playing a lot with the designer papers this month because of course they're on sale and so, and it, they're my favorite thing, so have had all sorts of fun projects with this and I just love the tower car. That's one of my favorites. Okay, I've got all my pinwheels on, look at that. And so you can see how nicely it lays flat and it'll fit into a regular size medium envelope. And now it's time to decorate all the pieces. And again, at this point, you can still do it upside down and do it the other direction. So you still have some options at this point. But I would lay out all your pieces and sentiments and kind of decide ahead of time how you want everything laid out. I gave everybody in the kit four pieces of 4x4 four four paper. And one of them I did white, but you could do um, all designer paper if you wanted. I did white just so we could have um, a final panel for um, a sentiment and a signature. If you wanted to do something else different, you could... Um, do um, designer series paper and maybe cut a piece diagonally and make a little pocket for your um, signature, that would work just as well. So you can play with this and do all sorts of fun things. I did a sentiment on each panel, but you don't have to do that. You can just have the pretty paper and it works just fine. So you're gonna cut at um, get this right this time because I had it wrong on my first page. Let's see, two and a half inches. Cut those four by four pieces at two and a half so you have two pieces. And then kind of lay them out to see how you want to put them on your, your paper. So those two look really good together. Let's see about these two. Those two look good together too, so we'll do those. And how about this? Um, this one and this one. Yeah, they all really do nicely um, paired together just as they are, or you can mix and match them however you please. So I'm just going to quickly um, put some tape runner on these and put them on just to get them on there quickly. And uh, yeah, I did my pattern, my floral to the left and my little, wow, I really got that one on Cricut and my, my sort of more um, patterny paper to the, to the little, right but you can do it however you please and it will look great any way you do it because this paper just is so forgiving and nice and it it seems like it has a directional up and down but really if you put it the other way it's going to look fine too so I don't think it really it really matters that much with this hand penned paper this was actually hand drawn by a Stampin' Up! artist so she watercolored all these designs to uh, make this paper and then they put it into the computer and print it all right now I've got these two pieces here I don't want to adhere them yet because I want to stamp and of course whenever you're stamping you want to um, stamp first in case you mess up so you can flip your pieces over so I stamped um, a sentiment on this piece and then I did the a, fl a flower, a big flower on this piece. So I'm going to show you, I'm just going to do the flower today because I know a lot of people have asked about the blends and some little tips and tricks for using the Stampin' Blends. So I thought the blends looked really pretty when I did that. Um, and I don't think this flower really has an up or down either. So we'll just stamp it right in the middle. And you use um, Memento Black ink when you're I'm going to use the blends. That's the proper type of ink for the alcohol markers. Okay, colors. I used Highland Heather, Mint Macaron, and Pale Papaya. Aren't those pretty together? 
those. Um, I think I also threw in a pink one for this one, but I think because I was using the pink cardstock, but I think I'll just go with these three. And um, let me just do the bigger one here and show you what I, how I color with blends. Um, I like to use the brush tip when I have a large image like this, so I'm just going to cover it completely with um, the lighter color. And you want to lay down quite a bit of color because you're going to be potentially doing some blending and you want to do one color at a time. Okay, then I use, I'm using the bullet tip just to lay down some color where there are lines and a little bit along the edges. And maybe a little bit of extra in the center as well. Okay, then I go back with the um, lighter color bullet tip. And if I feel like it needs some blending, I can just blend with that um, bullet tip and give it a little bit of extra. And then you can see it has a little dimension because it has, has lighter colors in the center. Let me do a leaf too. So here's the, let's see, the light um, mint macaron. Just fill in that leaf with the brush. And then the bullet tip with a darker color. And there's some nice shading right there in the center. So that's where I added my color and then the lighter tip bullet again, and we'll just blend that a little bit. Uh, and then we have, you could even do some more on the outside. You just want to leave this, some of the center so you have that um, gradation in color. Okay, so that one's good. When I get that all finished, I'll put that there and that there. All right, so decorating. You can do, have all sorts of fun decorating. So you can add lots of sentiments like I did, or you can just leave it pretty and add maybe some gems. The um, Genial Gems um, go with this bundle, and so they are really pretty with the pale papaya and mint macaron. So I actually did put a couple gems there. Um, or you can use some rhinestones if you have those on hand. The sentiments, what I did was I took a one inch strip of white cardstock and uh, I just used the scallop die from the hand penned dies here. And um, if you want to add a sentiment, what you'll need to do is cut this exactly in half. So that would be, or cut it, yeah, it's gonna be two and a half inches because that's what that piece is. So two and a half inches, cut it, and then you can have, you'll have some strips for some sentiments. I also included a scalloped uh, oval, so you could have a sentiment with that as well. And I also pulled in, I know a lot of you have this um, stamp set, Always in My Heart, so it goes really nicely with this um, suite as well. So it has some some of those scripty um, sentiments. Um, so you are always in my heart, I pulled from this stamp set and um, I also included in the kits uh, one of the little die cut flowers and a leaf if you want to stick that on so I think that's all my tips for the tower card it was so much fun to play with so I think once you make one you're going to want to make a bunch of those because they're a lot of fun okay I'm going to sign off now and we will hop on with the next card in just a couple minutes